All right. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, my name is Tenmay, and I'm a part of Kony Developer Community Team. Today, we are going to revisit the concept of reusable components, and we will propose an approach to build applications in a way where reuse and maintainability are at the core of the strategy. Kony Digital Architect Miguel Fernandez will be going. Uh, will be doing a deep dive session on today's topic. So before we start the session, um, make sure that if you have questions during the webinar, you can post it in the Q&A panel. We have experts monitoring the panel, and they will answer you as well as is possible. Uh, so make sure you, you post it in the Q&A panel and not in the chat window. Um, also, we are recording the webinar, so it will be posted on a base camp as a resource. So uh, you can share it with your friends, your peers, your colleagues later if they have not joined uh, the today's webinar. We also have a couple of polls during the session. If you want to uh, participate, you can cast your vote and uh, contribute to the webinar. So uh, let me invite Miguel, uh, who is going to take the session. Um, hello, Miguel. Um, please, um, you know, over to you. Hi, tonight. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, let me uh, share my screen. And um, can everyone see my screen? Yes, it's it's visible. Great. Okay. <clears throat> so let me just say, let me just start by saying one of the things that you're going to notice is that I've uh, changed a bit the, the agenda for today. This is uh, the result of me going through the contents and trying to prepare. And so. Uh, Please do not think that you have joined the, the, the wrong webinar. Um, so, um, if there are if there are any questions at the end regarding what we uh, had originally planned to discuss, please let me know. I'm going to try try to cover most of that, just with a different uh, under a different light, perhaps. Okay. So uh, the agenda for today is I'm going to go uh, I'm going to try flow um, fly over a few things like a uh, brief introduction, uh, ground rules and expectations for this for the session. Um, we're going to discuss what a component is, uh, why we need components or why we should be using them. Uh, we're going to discuss a little bit about the differences between components and uh, MVC architecture because there is a, a lot of um, confusion going around on ter in terms of where one ends and the other begins. Um, we're going to discuss do's and don'ts when offering components. Uh, I'm going to show you some live examples, potentially code a bit, and, uh, and then I'm going to discuss uh, the publication subscriber pattern, which is an alternative way of, of building components, right? and, uh, and when that is um, uh, useful. Uh, ground rules and expectations. I am not a slide guy, so if these are ugly, yes, you can joke about them. Uh, I do not pride myself on making beautiful slides. Um, everything we're going to do here uh, today can be done with low-code features, with the low-code features of the Kony Quantum platform, which we are not going to use. Okay, I am going to focus on how to do these things programmatically. This is um, a matter of I, I just want to emphasize this is a matter of personal preference. I know uh, many of you will know Kony as a um, low-code platform first, but it does allow us to, to write uh, very good quality code, and I'm going to stress the strong points of the platform in that regard today. Um, yeah, again, because at least I love to code. I hope you, you do too. Um, Fair warning, I have not rehearsed, and we are time constrained, so I honestly don't know how long it's going to take us to go through all of these slides. I'm going to try and fly over a few things. If if you need me to go back on them and clarify, please uh, post it to the Q&A window. Um, Q&A at the end. And uh, also, I'm going to be doing some stuff live, so if uh, things go wrong, please uh, bear with me. Intro, uh, for those of you who do not know me, I am a solutions engineer with Kony DBX in the EMEA region. I have, I, I studied computer 
engineering back in my home country, Venezuela. I have 12 years of industry experience, uh, half of that in consulting, another half in software companies, uh, some of that in product engineering, mostly delivery, and, uh, and again, one, one year to date with uh, Coney DX on the pre-sales team. Um, about presence on uh, the open source community, there are, I, I don't do this uh, as much as I'd like to, uh, but here are a couple of projects uh, that I've, I've contributed uh, that maybe you'd like to check out. And uh, if you ever need to ask any questions, I am I'm open to, to helping anybody who needs it. Uh, you can find me on Coney Basecamp, on LinkedIn, GitHub, and, and Stack Overflow, okay? So let's get started, let's get right into it. Um, so um, what is a component, okay? Uh, first thing is that this is not, I want to emphasize, this is not something that we've made up because we are crazy, right? If you are um, not familiar with the concept, you should know that uh, the W3C has a specification for components and uh, that every major uh, or all of the most popular uh, web JavaScript frameworks out there have their own implementation of what a component is. We just have, we're, we're, today we're going to focus, of course, on, on our own. Um, also, it is, it, it's an architectural concept. It's supposed to help you define how you're going to build your application, right? It doesn't have to anything to do with what your application does, meaning this is cross industry. So you can apply it to any project that you are working on. Um, it follows a divide and conquer approach, which is very common to computer science and computer engineering in, any in every aspect. You do not want to tackle large projects as a whole. Let me emphasize that you do not want to tackle large project, large projects or large problems as a whole because even though components in the Coney platform have been around for a very, uh, for, for a considerable time now, uh, there are still, I've, I still see a lot of uh, development teams struggling to cope with the complexity of their projects just because they have not bothered to break them down properly. Okay. So what we are going to see here today is a way for you to stay sane, for you to have more spare time, for you to finish on time, for you to be able to maintain your code better. Right, ship to market faster. So, um, a component is also meant to be standalone. Okay, meaning it's not supposed to have external dependencies. It's supposed to be a piece of functionality that you can ship and move from one project to the next, knowing that you don't have you can you just have to export and import the whole the the, the bundle. That you do not need to add anything else on top of the component to the project in order for that component to work. It also is supposed to be encapsulated, meaning that it should know nothing about the environment it is in. It should not know nothing. It should not know anything about the form that it has been embedded in, and it should know. It should not be able to make any assumptions on anything outside its own scope, right? Like anything like global functions that that uh, that you have defined for your application or global variables. It's not supposed to know about those. Okay. Um, it is also meant to deliver custom functionality. This is for something that goes beyond what uh, the, the standard widget palette provides. It doesn't make sense to say you're going to build a component for just a button, right? It, it's, it's meant for doing something with that button. Having a button has a specific behavior or calls a specific service or has a specific animation, right? <clears throat> Also, uh, components are meant to bundle both UI and logic, okay? meaning if you just wanted to reuse UI without uh, any logic, then you don't really need a, a component. You all, all that you really need is a, is a template, right? And there are ways to create those, which are called components without a contract. Uh, or if you just wanted to reuse some logic, then you would use uh, a, a standard JavaScript module and you can, that you can um, leverage throughout your application. Um, it also, a component, it's supposed to be something that is reliable, okay? You, it doesn't make sense to create a component that you have not uh, tested thoroughly, that people cannot trust, that uh, if, if, you, if you drop in a certain type of project, it will break, okay? 
So in order for you to, to actually get the most out of components, you need to test them properly. Uh, it, they need to be documented because if they are not documented, nobody is going to, to use them. So consider the scenario where you are building uh, anything, a web application, right? And you, you want to include, somebody tells you about this wonderful magical thing called jQuery. And you go to the jQuery um, website and you want to download it and you have to read through 150 pages of documentation. There is no, no example, no visuals. Would you use it? Probably not, right? Uh, it needs to be documented in a way that it can be understood within just a few minutes of looking at the screen. Otherwise, people are not going to use it, right? <clears throat> and, uh, and also, I want to emphasize this. Components are fun to work with. That, that's my son. He loves building stuff. I think he's going to follow in my steps. I don't know. Uh, but um, but it, this is, the point here is that uh, the uh, building an application, built, above all, building a, a complex application can sometimes be uh, tiring or confusing or cumbersome. Or, you know, but uh, building it component by component can actually be enjoyable because you do not need to bother with the whole of your app, the whole of the complexity of your application at once. You can just take it piece by piece and solve each individual piece separately. <clears throat> so based on all of that, I've tried to put together my own definition of, of what a component uh, is. It's a, sorry, I'm getting a problem here with the screen. Just a minute. <clears throat> okay. So a component is a bundle of self-contained, custom, documented, and reliable UI and logic used to ship encapsulated functionality to solve a subset of a scope that reoccurs either within an app or across applications. And again, I want to emphasize shipping functionality across applications. Do not build components just for yourself. Build them so that others can use them, right? Focus on that and you'll build them properly. Um, why use components? The, the promise of components is that you can define them once and uh, use them several times. Uh, this, of course, has an added effect of accelerating project development, which is something that we can all appreciate. Uh, and it's meant to deliver simple to use functionality with negligible effort, meaning building your component uh, may take maybe a couple of hours, right? Uh, doing, uh, building it with all the bells and whistles, documented, documenting it properly, and so on. Uh, but you are eventually saving time because every time you drag and drop that component into a new project or into, into a new screen, that's two hours of work you just saved. And dragging and dropping takes you just a couple of seconds, right? So that's the, that's the proper way to think about this. Do not think about this as, you know, you're working on, on your huge, app, huge um, behemoth of a project and then, oh, I don't have the time to uh, build this into a proper component. I'm just going to do whatever, right? Copy and paste as many times as I need it. Don't think like that. Think about saving time in the future saving time in terms of maintainability, saving time in terms of, in terms of uh, being able to extend and enhance the functionality in the future. Um, and again, you know, fix ones, evolve ones, improve ones. Uh, I, I've had uh, people tell me, uh, Miguel, we find that uh, building, uh, building applications with a Kony platform was uh, difficult, right? And then I asked, so why was it difficult. Oh, because when you, you need to make a change, uh, you need to make it in several places at the same time, right? Which is, if you think about it, not really a problem with the, the, the tool. It's a problem of, with how you are using the tool, right? If you have just copied and pasted the same stuff all over the project, then yes, you're going to have to fix it n times when you have to fix it and enhance it n times when you have to enhance it. But that does not, that cannot Sorry, that can happen with any platform, not just with Kony Quantum, right? <clears throat> now, um, continuing a bit with the theory, uh, components are built 
on Tony's interpretation of the MVC pattern, the model view controller pattern, but they are not the same thing as the MVC pattern. Components are a different approach, and I'm going to we're going to talk uh, we're going to discuss a bit on what the differences are. Okay, so not the same thing. MVC is uh, meant to enforce a single responsibility principle, and it's a horizontal breakdown of an application, meaning you are trying to separate the different layers of the logic in your app. So the presentation layer from the, the, the controller layer from the data model layer, right? Whereas components are trying to enforce the dry principle. For those, who, those of you who do not know, dry stands for do not repeat yourself. So do everything, write everything once, okay? Um, and it's a vertical breakdown, not of an application, but of a scope. Okay, meaning that that scope, parts of that scope can be uh, shared or can, can overlap with parts of another scope of another application elsewhere. Uh, so to try to illustrate, this is a very well-known uh, diagram. I took this from, from Wikipedia. Um, there's a, in MVC, you have the view, the model, and the controller, right? And then uh, authors and, uh, and camps, interpret the flows may interpret the flows differently whether the, the the model updates the view or the controller queries the model and updates the view that it's something of a uh, it's a bit of a religious war going out and going on um, between proponents of one approach or the other and uh, there are different acronyms for this uh, and sometimes you'll even see this being referred to as MV star to try to account for all of the different variations. Um, there's a uh, model view presenter, model view view controller, and, and so on. Um, and then this is what components-based architecture really is, okay? This is, uh, if, if you see, if you, if you notice, there is model view controller across all of these components, right? Each one of these components resolves a little piece of functionality, right? And uh, each one of them in, implements model view controller. So that's why I say model view controller uh, breaks down your or, or cuts across uh, scopes. It's a horizontal breakdown of the application, whereas uh, fun the functionality of an application may have the uh, may, may have a need for uh, a menu, may have a need for login fields. It may have a need for what I like calling the Swiss Army button, which is that, that button that's like a floating button. You press it, and it doesn't really do anything except show you a ton of other little buttons, right? And so that's a little bit uh, an, uh, an attempt to try to illustrate the difference between the two. Um, then let's talk about the don'ts first, okay? Things that we do not want to do when we build components. As we all know, there are right and wrong ways uh, to use tools, right? The tool may be very good, but if you do not use it properly, you may be shooting yourself on the foot or worse. Um, so things that I believe are very, very bad practices and the, you're not supposed to create components and then leave the controllers and those components empty and keep all of the logic of your your application stocked in the in the main controller of each form. Okay, the purpose of breaking your application down into smaller bits is to break down not just the UI but also the logic, and it it's healthy to break down the logic and it will save you a ton of time uh, further down the line to do when when doing maintenance and enhancements and so on. Uh, do not abuse the global scope. So components, um, the, the Coney's MVC pattern is built on on required JS, a synchronous model um, de mo module definition, um, and you can inject, you can use dependency injection into those modules, and I'm going to show you how. What you should not be doing is creating components that depend on things that you have defined in the global scope. Okay, um, and then also. This is one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm going to propose today we should all uh, adopt is you need to try and start curating your components and assign uh, small projects that are only for that component, meaning do not try 
to uh, create a component inside of a huge application, right? And add all of the bells and whistles and test it and uh, everything inside of that huge application. You're going to, so your build times are going to be longer. Uh, you, you risk affecting the application, missing, missing details, uh, running into, into marriage conflicts. You should, you should not try to do it. And I'm going to propose an alternative um, approach to that, okay? Um, and do not try to build components with overcomplicated goals. If, if you remember the, the prior slide, my components there were very, very small pieces of functionality, right? Uh, a very little menu, a very little button, uh, very little. So it's, it's all supposed to be as, as small a piece of functionality as you can think of, okay? To give you an example, if you have a slider, Right. Uh, if you if you have a, a screen where you want to do simulation of uh, loans, right? Then uh, the slider that you move left or right to select the amount you want to borrow uh, may be a reusable component in itself. It doesn't need to be the entire. So the, the, it, you don't need to build out a component out of the entire functionality of the screen, right? Um, <clears throat> So do create each component in an independent demo project. Okay, this is so you can think about things like what properties do I need to expose? What methods do I need to expose? What things is another developer going consuming my component going to need in order to use it properly? Okay, so if, if you put your project in a, in a dummy or demo project where you're just working on the component, then all of the logic outside of the component can be specifically to test the component. It doesn't have to be the actual logic of your, 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 um, of the application that you're trying to build in the end, right? So you can focus on testing it. Um, you need to stick to uh, the default theme and fonts. I'm going to show you an example of a component I created where I ran into issues by not doing this, meaning your component, for your components, you should not be importing, uh, not creating additional custom themes, and you should not be importing additional uh, font files. Okay, because the, the, the side effect of that is going to be that then every time you import that component into another project, it's going to bring along, recreate the entire theme that, that you had for your, you already have for your component, and uh, and it's going to bring along all of the font files that, that you had in that project. Maybe you don't need to use them in the project that where you're importing the component, okay? Uh, namespace your skins and images. I'm going to show you uh, how I do that. Um, always nest in a top flex. I'm also going to show you this live, uh, meaning you know everything inside your component should be inside a parent a parent flex container so that you can animate it and style it. Um, and you should uh, try to break down large controllers into separate modules, right? So it, even if you're, let's say, it, it could happen that even, even after scoping your component to a very little, to a very small piece of functionality, then maybe that, that small piece of functionality still needs a lot of code because maybe you are doing, I don't know, very complex animations, right? So then those animations should be in separate modules that are still part of the component, but not part of your main component controller. And I'm also going to show you examples of this. Um, and you should try and have as few dependencies as possible, no dependencies if possible. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so also uh, you need to version your project rigorously, uh, publish releases, export your project, export the component and attach it to that release. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, I use github.com uh, for that, uh, which is great. Uh, for those of you using uh, GitHub Enterprise, it's, it's a great tool to work with. You can do uh, the same with Bitbucket. It's a matter of, uh, or with I say, GitLab, it's a matter of taste. I'm going to show it to you today with uh, github.com, okay? And also so you can uh, you can freely access the examples I'm going to build. Um, and also you need to document rigorously and add pics. So you, you 
people are going to use your components if they can easily relate to the functionality that you are trying to deliver with them. And uh, nothing is better for doing this than, than giving them visuals. If you try to describe what your component does and you do not show visuals, no, very little people are going to actually get it and they're not going to be in, as enthusiastic. Most are not going to be as enthusiastic about using your component because they won't know what they're, what they're actually getting when they, when they import it. Um, okay, so now I'm going to show you a few examples. Uh, I'm going to walk through the standard stuff, how to add standard pro properties, skins, methods, and events uh, to a reusable component. And then, then I'm going to get into the, the custom stuff. So custom properties, custom events, and custom methods. Okay. So for the, the first example, I'm going to show you a component I call the um, amount slider. Sorry. Right. Which is this. Again, this is publicly available in github.com. Basically, it's just uh, a slider with uh, a label here. And this label is formatted, so you pick the amount using the slider, and then uh, the logic inside the component formats that according to the locale of the application, right? And it adds uh, a currency symbol, okay? So <clears throat> for that, Um, Mary and Maya, I've, I've been talking here for, for a bit. Can you guys hear me correctly? Absolutely. <clears throat> Loud and clear. Okay, great. Um, so, this is the component uh, that, uh, that I've built here. Let me show you how it works. Um, As you can see, there is nothing else in the form, right? Uh, the, the whole purpose of this project is just the component, right? Now, uh, just to show you how the, the localization works here, you know that there is a pony dot uh, dot get current locale function, right? In this case, it's uh, Spanish. Okay, now I'm going to change it. To English, right? And then the moment I slide this again, you notice that the, the formatting here has changed to that locale. It used to be, it, it was using uh, the dot as a thousand separator and now it's using comma because that's what corresponds to the new locale set, okay? And again, the project, the only thing the project has is one form and one component. And the whole purpose of the project is to test this component in particular. So um, to take this as an example, um, if, if you look at the structure, it is very simple. It just has one parent flex, uh, a slider, and then here it has this currency label and uh, and this amount label. That's all it, it really has. Okay. Now, um, in order to work with this component, you define you define the components controller. You can see it's, it's a very small controller. This is very manageable functionality. You can use this several times in an application. It, I, can, I think it kind of illustrates very well uh, the point that I was trying to make, right? It would be a lot harder for you. To, building this took me approximately 10 minutes, okay? Uh, then documenting it thoroughly, having a sandwich, uh, it took me maybe another five minutes. So it, it, it's very simple to do, and you can save lots of time doing this. Whereas if I had tried to build this into a from a larger application, it would have taken me a lot longer to build, 
um, and I would have been a lot more concerned with not trying to affect the overall application, not trying to, it would have been a lot harder, right? Um, now, looking into uh, the properties of the component, uh, just for those of you who are not familiar with uh, how a component uh, exposes properties, there is a, a, when you select the UI for the component, notice I am I'm standing on the, on the template tab, and I have selected this component out of the, out of the components node, right? If I click here on the panel to the right, manage the properties, I can see all of the properties that I have exposed from this component. Okay. When when you expose there are there are there are standard, let's say call them standard, standard properties or pass-through properties, and then there are custom properties. Right? The standard properties are those properties that belong to uh, another widget within the component. And that you somehow want to expose for other developers to be able to manipulate. Like for instance, uh, here I have selected the slider widget inside the component, and that that when I click here, I can see all of the properties within that component. Right? Every slider, every slider widget from the palette has a max and a min um, property uh, that that you can control. Right? So I've given it uh, a name here. Uh, maybe that should be a capital and max value. Value for this one, okay? And then the programmatic of this is max and the programmatic uh, name of that is min, okay? And then here I can uh, group my, my properties. I can click to manage groups. And you can see I've created two groups of properties, one for the settings of the, of the amount slider and another one for the look and feel, okay? And, um, and then everything that is a, a, a skin, like for instance, uh, the skin on the slider, right? I put on their look and feel and everything else I put on their settings, okay? Now, what happens when you expose these properties like this is that then on the, on the form where you use the component, so on this form in particular, form one, when I have created this instance, now you get the standard tasks that you get, you get for any other widget, look, skin, action, review, but also you get this component tab, okay? And this component tab exposes, which lists the properties that you have exposed. So for instance here, oh, this you can see it lists all of these properties that I had already configured. And you can see that uh, there are others that are look and feel which are not really skins. Like for instance, this is the, the thickness of, of, the, of the slider. Um, and I've also added this, uh, this currency code, this currency ISO code property to, to the slider, okay? Now, um, if I go back to the definition, <clears throat> uh, sorry, apologies. And, and then the other thing I can, I can, you can notice is that I exposed a bunch of skins, but they're not listed here under the look and feel uh, group, right? So what I can do is I can go here to the skin tab, and then I, I can click on selected skins, sorry, exposed skins, For some reason, it's not. Let me manage this again. Another skin. It's not, I don't know what's wrong with the project. It's not showing me the, the skins here. It should be listing the skins that I have, um, that I have exposed. Maybe we'll get to see, we'll get a chance to see that in another project. This is a last resort. Let me see if I 
Keep refreshing it and fix this. Maybe I have damaged the project somehow. Okay, so um, going back to to the properties, if I go back to a component, there are other things that I can manage beside the properties. For instance, there are custom properties that I can define. Okay. So custom properties are properties that are not part of any existing widget within the property. So if I try to add one here, you'll notice that it doesn't offer me the structure of the internal UI within the component. So I cannot just select a widget and then expose one of its existing properties. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to add a property here to expose uh, the number of decimal places, right? So decimal uh, places. And I would say display name is decimal places. <clears throat> and it's a uh, it's an integer, right? And let's say the default value is two, and I'm gonna put that under the settings group. Okay, I'm going to apply that. Now if I look at the the component instance on the on the screen. I'll see that there is an additional field now for decimal places. Okay. Now, this, if if you are creating a custom uh, property like this, then there is still a bit of code that you need to 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 write in order for this to work. So let's go to, for instance, let's go back to the components definition and. Here, I am going to add a debugger statement, okay, to stop the execution at this point. Okay, so in order for the for the debugger statement to kick in, I have to select the the debug option here and reload it again, and and there it is, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look for the this variable, which is the controller itself, and store it as a global variable, right? So I can debug it, and then I'm going to relate it with continue the execution. Um, so now I've, I've created a, a new property called uh, what decimal places, right? So temp one is the controller dot uh, get decimal places. There is no decimal places function, right? Uh, or um, there, there's or 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 any sorry or any set decimal places option, okay? Why is that? I still need to add a bit of code the, in, order for, in order to make uh, custom properties work. So anything that is exposing a standard property or a standard method or a standard event works out of the box, okay? It works just because these things are already defined and what they're doing is just exposing them. But in order to get, um, custom properties, custom methods, and custom events to work, you actually have to write a bit of code. So um, there's a snippet that, that you can get from our official docs. I keep, uh, I keep a snippet here on a, uh, a GitHub gist and uh, for convenience, right? And you can just copy and paste that there. And you have to do this for uh, for every variable that you want to that you want to define. So in this case, I just want to I just want to define that uh, decimal places. Let me just check the name of the custom variable. 
place in places. Okay. And then uh, the same places here. Underscore the same places. That's for the getter, and now this is for the setter. Okay. Now I'm going to build it again. And again, I am going to expose this variable, and then what is it? And point one dot Let's try it like this. I am going to expose this property in a label. Or an alert. It's too simple. Uh, pre show. Pre show. So, as you know, uh, components, both components and, and forms, have uh, their own life cycle events. So, post show is one of those life cycle events. So, after the form, has, is visible on the screen. You can do specific stuff just before it becomes visible. You can do other logic and so on. So I'm going to alert. Um, in this case, this property would be uh, called this dot underscore. This is my places. I think that's maybe the reason I was missing the underscore. Uh, and to remove that there, and I'm going to alert this on post show of the one. Right, and I need to wire that. And so in the constructor. View dot uh, post show sign is that place so okay meaning I have to find the form the function here and on post show of the view I am going to fire that function okay also again you can you can uh, you can wire that with actions and using the, the action editor uh, but oh. Hit the wrong button. Mm -hmm. okay, and I'm defined. There's something wrong with this component. Okay, I'm going to have to uh, work on this offline and publish the component once I've fixed it. Uh, I don't know, I've been 
what I've done wrong with this one in particular. Uh, but let's move on to um, to custom um, events and oh yeah, sorry. So one thing that I wanted to point out is that you don't necessarily need to use uh, the setters and getters in order to create additional properties for your component. Uh, one thing I have done with this component is, is that you notice during the uh, so editing time, there is this there's this particular label here, right, uh, which is the the currency label, right. And I'm not really going to show that label what I'm because I am using the formatting function that I told you about. So what I'm doing with this really is, is that uh, on the creation of the on the creation of the component, I am storing the text that uh, the developer has used the design time, right? And then I'm using this uh, variable as an input to this formatting currency, uh, sorry, to this formatting function here, right? And then on the on the on the pre-show, um, sorry, on the constructor. In the same constructor, I am setting the visibility of that label to false. So that label is only visible at design time. I'm hiding it after that at, during runtime. It's being hidden. And then I'm using the value just to uh, be able to format the amount. But in, 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 so in a nutshell, what I'm doing is I am creating a custom property without really defining any setters and getters. I am abusing the property of an already existing widget. Okay. Um, then, for the uh, the other examples like the custom events, I have this other uh, component that I wanted to show you. The the reveal so this is the component uh, that I wanted to show you for this uh, temp temporary reveal. So the point the the idea here is if you are trying to let's say let's say the customer has forgotten. It's a, it's a banking application and the user has forgotten their PIN for their card, okay, to go to the ATM. So you build this functionality in order to be able to show them or remind them that their PIN was, um, but you only want, it, you want to show it uh, temporarily, okay? So let's, uh, yeah, this one. Let's jump to that project. And let's see, I think we're doing really bad on time. Let me see if I can, Rush uh, through these. Mm. So let me show you what what it does, how it works. Okay, so I have added a gesture recognizer here. So you slide it and then the countdown starts. It shows you the secret, it starts a countdown. And eventually when it, that collapses, it, uh, it becomes invisible again, okay? So um, in, this, in this exercise, the, uh, the, the point here that I wanted to show is uh, custom events. So you notice that when I, when I slide, uh, so the component is doing something, right? And then it's, it's revealing the, the secret and then when it slides back, it's having it hidden, right? And you could do things like, uh, so uh, you slide it and now externally the application wants to display a message that says, make note of your, uh, of your pin, it's going to disappear in, in 10 seconds, right? And then, uh, and then when it slides back, you want to change that message to say, um, I don't know, thank you for visiting or um, slide it again in order to reveal the pin again. Um, so if, if, that, if that were the case, then, uh, then you, need, you would need the component to be able to tell the, the application it exists in that these things have, have happened, right? 
that uh, the, the secret has been uh, shown or that the secret has been uh, has been hidden. Okay. So um, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a couple of um, of custom custom events. Okay. So I'll select the component and go to the action step. Right. Then you have manage events and manage methods. Uh, remember the difference is events are for the component to communicate stuff to the outside world, and the methods are to communicate stuff from the outside world to the component. Okay. So here, like before, with standard properties, I could be exposing things like uh, um, I don't know, uh, on touch end for the label. But that is not really what I want to do. My in this this use, use case in particular is a, a custom event. So I'm going to create a new custom event and I'm going to call it on secret uh, shown. Okay, and I am going to add another one and call it on secret. Hidden. Okay. Uh, apply. Okay. So now these two are now defined, right? But I need to invoke them from my code. Again, for anything that is custom, you, you need to write a little bit of code or um, wire it in, in the actions editor. So looking at the component, there are a couple of places where I need to add these invocations. Here, um, the, uh, when, uh, when the countdown, um, um, right. You see here. So this is this function is the one that actually uh, animates the the lid to slide it away and uh, make the pin visible, right? So after it is done with that animation, I want to say this dot uh, on secret uh, shown, okay? And then here, where uh, in this other function in the countdown. Where the uh, you know you notice I have a bunch of if statements here. So if state if it doesn't go into any of those uh, statements, it's because the countdown to so the timer is zero. So I am going to hide the uh, I'm going to slide I'm sorry the lid back into position and uh, make the pin invisible, right? Uh, and then after that is done, I want to invoke this dot on uh, secret. Uh, hidden. Okay. Uh, notice that I haven't really defined uh, on secret shown and on secret hidden. They, these are at this point in time they are they are functions that do not have a body. Okay. I've just I'm just invoking whatever the the parent form will make or will assign to these events. Okay. So on the parent form on the, on the form controller here, what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, let me just overwrite this and uh, you'll know that any uh, form controller needs to have an on navigate function. Um, and what I do is you can wire a lot of stuff inside the uh, the on navigate function, but typically what I do is I just uh, wire that uh, to additional functions that point to the life cycle events in the in the forms uh, life cycle. The form has more granular control. Of its life cycle than, than the controller does. So this dot uh, post show, which doesn't yet exist, and uh, I'm going to define that right away. Post show. And then here, what I'm going to do is uh, this dot view dot the instance of the component, which is called uh, temp reveal, could be temp reveal one or whatever. This is just the, the name of the instance. Uh, that uh, in this case would be on secret shown assign. Um, let's give it this. Uh, I 
alert. Shown, right? And then let's do the same for the other event. So I see Fred hitting. Right? <clears throat> so notice that here the parent form is the one giving a body to these to, to these functions, right? So I'm assigning a function to the uh, to the uh, to the event. Okay. Hopefully this one. Uh, let's see if it shows my function. Yes, okay. So I wired one correctly. And the other one wrong, but this one, so the unhidden one, uh, fired. Okay, so that's good. Uh, let me see what happened. How did I? Mm. A secret. Oh, right. And spell this. A secret. There you go. Shown, and then when the countdown gets to zero, then then it fires the um, the function, which is part of the form, not the controller. So in this, in, notice that what we're doing here is encapsulating the component. The component does not know anything about what the form is using it for. It just communicates an event and lets the form handle it however it wants, right? And then from there, you can uh, change labels or navigate to other forms, but the component itself does not know anything about uh, the, its surroundings, okay? And, and that, is a, that is a guiding principle here. Um, I noticed that uh, we're doing very uh, bad with time. I am going to, all of these examples are already published, so I'm gonna skip through, through, through the rest of custom methods, right? And I'm going to show you, um, and I'm going to jump right into the, the pop-up pattern. Okay. So um, pop-up stands for, for publish, publish subscriber. The basic idea is that uh, one element uh, sends out a message, right? Kind of like a, a broadcast. And then there are different other elements, other different different other parts of your of your application listening to see whether that event occurs. And when that event occurs, then they do something, okay? This, notice that this is different from the, uh, the inbuilt event listener functionality within the Kony SDK, because in the Kony SDK, I just showed you, showed you uh, custom events, right? And what I did was the component exposed uh, a custom event and then uh, the, the form assigned uh, functionality to be executed on that. But it's just one piece of functionality. You cannot assign, you cannot do multiple assignments. You cannot execute multiple pieces of logic on a single event, right? In order to do that, you would have to write a parent function that calls all of the stuff you want to happen at the point. But you cannot do this. It's one to one. This will allow you to do one to n. Okay. Um, the way I normally do these, I do this in my projects is using Amplify.js. Uh, Amplify, for those of you who do not know it, Amplify.js is a published subscriber uh, library within JavaScript. I do not use the entire thing. It's, it's very big. I just use the, the core library and I've adapted it and, and I'll, I'll publish that for, uh, for you to, to see how, how I use it. Um, and then um, th there's a question of, of when to use PopSub. So I've just discussed that it allows you to do more than just one-to-one. -one. It allows you to do one-to-many, right? But sometimes, or you know, most of the time, it's not, that's not really necessary. So when is it necessary? So is, is there a lot going on in the forms? One of the things that I would ask, right? 
because for instance, in this example, let's say that this were the, the mock-up of what you're being asked to create, right? So then uh, this is for that temp reveal. Uh, imagine, you know, your, your header has to slide in after the form. The, the basic information on the card has to appear as well. Uh, the message has to say something depending on the status of the other components. The temporary reveal uh, component um, only becomes uh, enabled when the customer has successfully typed in a, a, pin, a PIN or a, a transaction authorization code they get, they get from an SMS. And then if they fail several times, then the message needs to say, oh, you failed several times, please fill in the CAPTCHA. And then the CAPTCHA needs to appear. So overall, the flows get very confusing. It may be a small screen, but you get tons of stuff, right? Uh, flowing all over the place, and it's very hard for you to figure out what is it that you actually need to invoke at any point in time. So if this is the scenario you have, then Publish, Publish Subscriber can, can solve this for you and keep your application um, um, clean, right? But there's a, there, are, there are risks that you need to take into consideration when using the Publish Subscriber pattern. So one of the things is that Contrary to the rule that we've just made, so we're going to have to make an exception to the rule that the component does not know anything about its surroundings. Because it is, the component absolutely needs to know the implementation of the pop subscriber pattern that you're using. Right? So that, that's one thing that's already breaking out, breaking uh, the rules that we've already set, that we just set. Right? Then the, the other thing is that you need to watch out for unwanted listeners and uh, potential members, right? Which is the dread of every developer out there, right? So um, the, the, the two rules that we need to, to make sure we comply with is that any component instances must only listen for the events on their parent form, okay? So you don't want a component trying to do something because a form where that, that it is not part of uh, published an event. Okay, you want components to listen for events on the form, uh, on the parent form, and then you want the parent form to only listen for events on the child, on, on the on the children components. Right. So let's let's try that very briefly, and uh, I'm I'm going to, again, since we're doing so badly with time, be assured I'm going to publish all of this. Uh, So, uh, Tanmai, what do you say? Maybe another uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes? Yep, sure. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so um, I have this, this project just to demonstrate the, the whole pop sub concept. Okay, the, uh, if I show you, let me see where I'm standing at just a second. Uh, Okay, so what this this form does is it, it, it just has one little button down here, okay? And uh, this is my component, okay? When I click on this button, I want this to take me to another place in the application, okay? That, that's about it. And I'm going to try and demonstrate, using this, I'm going to demonstrate how pops up can be used, okay? So the, we just run the live preview here. Okay, so notice that uh, it's got a little uh, animation there on the way in, right? And and then that that's about it. Okay, it doesn't really do anything, not yet. Okay, anyway. So um, what I want this component to do, so I want it to take me to to another form. Okay, but if I wanted to, just a minute. Uh, Right, but if if I wanted to, if I wanted to add functionality to uh, to this button, 
this is the controller for that button. Right? And you can see that all it's really doing is uh, it's wiring. Uh, so the, con the, the constructor is just wiring these other two functions. And then on, on pre-show of, of, the, of the view, uh, moving the button at, uh, to 100% of the top. Let me just show you why, why is that. If the button is, is here, so if I select this button, the button is, uh, is positioned at 0% from the top. Right? If I position it at 20% uh, from the top, it starts to, to go down, right? So that, that's exactly what, and if I just put it at 100%, then it, it's completely gone, right? So that's what I'm doing on pre-show. So on pre-show, I'm basically moving it out of view, right? And then on post-show, I'm sliding it in, right? And then here you can appreciate what I said before. If the component is very, very small, but then the, the logic instead of it starts getting convoluted, try breaking it down uh, into smaller pieces. Uh, maybe the component is already the smallest undivisible piece of functionality that you could get, that you could, you could break it into, but you can still place part of that logic into additional modules. And for instance, here you can see that all of the animation logic is placed in a different module, which I am then injecting. I'm using uh, require.js to inject that functionality into the controller, okay? So practice doing this, it will, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a game changer. It's going to help you a lot. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, the other thing, so I want this button to take me somewhere, okay? So typically I wire buttons, uh, anything that's an action on, on post show. So I would normally go about this by saying um, this, let's add a line middle, this dot view, and then the button is called go button, right? On touch end, right? And then on touch end, then I want it to do something, right? Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, then I want it to do something, so I need it to create a navigation object, right? But if you look at the navigation API, this is already a problem because the the navigation API uh, requires you to instantiate a navigation object, object and uh, it requires a, a friendly name or the ID of an, of an existing form. Therefore, this component would have to know what the names of the forms and the rest of the project are or, or their friendly names, right, in order for me to be able to create that navigation object. So this is already not what we want. Okay, so uh, in order to avoid this, what we should do is uh, potentially expose the uh, go button on touch and uh, method, right? So instead of doing that, we stop, we think again, there's a better way to just select the component, right? And we manage events. And then we go. And this is a good example of how of, of why expose uh, why you expose uh, a standard event. So the the go button dot on touch, and I'm gonna call this um, on uh, go button touch. Okay. Great, and then now the the form that it's in, just to prove a point, uh, this is the instance, and now you can see here on the action tab, the action editor, on go button touched, right? And I, I can click edit and go to the action editor and wire whatever I want using the local features, but what I'm going, to, what I typically do is I go here and I, I wire it in code, okay? Now, I'm not gonna wire it in code yet here, or rather, just to, just to illustrate, uh, function, you can do this two ways. You can return an object or you can return a function. Return, and then this becomes a controller, and uh, 
navigate function, right? And then actually here, uh, I could do things like this dot view dot um, demo button dot on 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 go button dot right and add a function there. Okay, I could do this. Okay, but since we're trying to build this in a pop sub way, let's. I'm going to jump ahead now to another part of the exercise where I've already done this. Uh, so I'm using Git. Uh, so I switch to another. version of the project. Okay. So here, uh, slide in, wait, something wrong here. Um, I think I was not able to switch branches before. And uh, forms controller. Okay, so here, what I'm doing, what I'm going to do, I told you I was using the Amplify Core right, library. So what I'm, I've done is I've included uh, Amplify JS into the project, and also uh, the way I normally do navigation is I create a router object, and all my navigation is gone is done inside that router object, and I have tries and catches, so that it's easier for me to debug. Uh, uh, any any awkward situations when uh, my application is not navigating the way I expect it to. Um, I'll be publishing this code as well, so you can so you can leverage it if you want to. Right. So then, um, what am I going to do? The form controller is going to um, subscribe. Use the amplify uh, object to subscribe to an event. That's called uh, demo button on touch end, and this is just it, this can be any string, okay? But I've, I've chosen to name it after the instance, so the, the ID of the instance, and uh, and uh, and um, an on touch end suffix, okay? And then when that occurs, it is going to fire this function, and this function is simply this, and it will create this message saying fire listener. And it's going to take me to a form uh, to another form. Okay. Notice that the, the other form uh, doesn't exist, so the navigation is going to fail. Okay. But that's that's part of the exercise. And then on the template side in the component, what I've done in the uh, 
in the controller is that uh, the um, here on post show of the controller I've said uh, this dot view dot go button on touch end and this is where we were uh, going to add functionality to navigate right what I've done is I've called this other function which simply uh, publishes this event it publishes demo button dot on touch end okay so let's see how how that uh, how that behaves right notice that in this approach uh, the component has not exposed any custom events it's it has not exposed any uh, custom methods it is it is all being wired through the the amplify uh, object using the publication subscriber uh, pattern um, let's give it a minute to uh, run Okay, so there's form one, and I am going to click the button, and it fired, right? I cannot navigate to form two because it doesn't exist, but you can see here, it, the message is there, fired listener in form, uh, in form one, okay? So all I need to do is create form two, right? And uh, what, I, what I want to do is I want to create a form two with, that looks exactly the same, it just has a another button that brings me back to form one okay in order to do that uh, i'm just going to go back to the project structure i am going to duplicate this this form and i'm going to rename it to form two right and then here the label just for us to stay sane just going to read form two and then on the forms controller on form to controller here when this event is, is fired i want it to take me back to oh, sorry, uh, form one okay Okay, so there's a form. Uh, now I click on, on this button. Uh, let me clear this up. Okay, so there you see it. Form fired event listener in form one. It took me to form two. Okay, and now and now here's the problem. This form this this button is wired just the same as form one, right? So I. I expect to see the same thing, right? But I'm not seeing the same thing. I'm seeing two events fired, okay? One in form one and one in form two. Now, why is that? Because the, the form is listening for an event, right? And the component, you have to think of the component as a definition, right? But each time you put it into a form, it becomes an instance of that definition, right? So the, there, there, is, there are two instances of the component, one in form one, one in form two, and they are both publishing the same event to the same event, to the same topic, right? And, uh, and broadcasting that message. And both, there are two listeners, one in form one and one in form two, and they are both being fired, right? So that, that is the, the danger of, of using uh, publication uh, subscriber this is what we wanted right so what we originally had we had uh, one form uh, and one component instance let's call it component instance one right uh, and then we wanted to add a, a second form and a component instance two inside that form publishing an event and then the form needed to fire a, a listener on that event okay but this is what we actually did because the, 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 the topic that component instance one and component instance two are, are, are publishing to is exactly the same. So how do we fix this, okay? So ideally, what I want to do is I want to separate the topics, okay? But there, there's, a, there's a problem here because uh, the, in order for me to try to, to, to separate these, then I need to have a different, uh, let's say, amplify uh, subscriber topics object for each 
form, right? So uh, form one would have one, form two would have one. And then each of those would be completely isolated from each other. But the problem with that is that sometimes you do want uh, topics that are global to the entire application. Like, for instance, if, if, you, if you send out a request to a server and the server needs to do a long running task and it, it, it's supposed to get back to you at some other point, but say that you are running against that, you're integrating against the BPM, BPM engine, a business process management engine, right? And then you, you publish a request and then you need to pull uh, for the status in that request then you, the user may have navigated to another form, right? So when the request, the, the, the polling running in the background uh, gets a, a positive response from the server saying, yes, now I have solved your request, here's the, here's the response, then you want to create a, a toast uh, somewhere, wherever the user is, or create a little notification saying your request is done, right? So in that case, the, the publication, so the, the topic would not be specific to one form; it would be global to the entire to the entire application. So that's that's not a. It, that's all to say, separating this, you know, one pop subscriber per form would not be a, a good solution. So, what is in the solution that 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 we can um, we can that we can uh, apply? Um, Moving to another version of the project, a later version of the project. And, uh, I need to uh, refresh. Okay, so what I'm going to show, so the, 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 the problem with trying to implement, implement what we just discussed is that the, the form can know, the form knows the IDs of all of its children. So the form could uh, easily subscribe to the events that the components publish. But the components do not know the name of the form that they are in. And this is by design. This is the, the way that our engineering team uh, tried to prevent uh, people creating components that were not really encapsulated because again the component is not supposed to know where it is where it is in okay the name of the form that it is in or what functions that form define or that, that controller defines or whatever right and so what we're going to do is try to because we really know what we are doing we do want that reference to that parent form and we are going to get around that issue Notice that, um, again, going back to the fact that I use a, a router object to navigate, if, if you look at, into this code, you'll find that um, I have a go-to function that is the one that actually creates the, uh, the navigation uh, object, okay, here. It creates the navigation object, and then it tries to navigate, okay? Um, and I am going to abuse this component, right? to keep track of what the current form is, okay? I have defined a getter and setter and a, a variable inside this, this object. So the bar current is the ID of the current form, and I have a, a set uh, current passing in the, the ID of the current form, and I get current, okay? And then what I'm doing in every controller inside the project is that uh, on navigate, Right, I said I do uh, router set current to this w dot id. Okay, so now by making a reference to this router object, I can say I can always say from any component or from any form, I can say dollar router get current, and it will give me the ID of the current form. Okay, and uh, and 
the 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 new version of the this demo button controller now when it publishes it's saying amplify publish right? and it goes router get current so that's the idea of the, of the current form right and uh, dot demo and touch end right so it doesn't really know who the parent form is and it doesn't matter it just needs to know who the current form is and it is publishing this event so that the existing form will uh, will will listen for it. Okay, the, the sorry, the the currently visible form will listen for it. Okay, and then the 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 controller for each one of these forms is doing something similar on the on the subscriber side. It is uh, before I was just subscribing to uh, demo button on touch end. Now I am subscribing to the form ID dot demo button dot untouch end. Okay. And if I uh, and that is happening on both controllers, and if I now uh, run the live preview, you'll see that instead of getting uh, the listeners in both forms firing, we're supposed to get just one, the one for the current form. So here, um, clear this. Right, so one one fired, and I am standing now on form two, and then I click here, back to form one, and only one fired. Okay, do you want to see that again? Only one fired. Only one fired. Okay. So that, that solves the problem uh, with uh, the, the publication subscriber pattern. Um, and, uh, and I wanted to, and I, so, which brings me basically to, to the end of the session, which is really good because I think we're, we're, we're terribly over time. Uh, some stuff that I would like you to go uh, and do on your own. Um, go build a component, okay? It doesn't need to be a, a, a huge component. It, it, pick something small. Uh, pick something that appeals to you, right? Uh, that you can you can relate to. If uh, it doesn't need to be related to your everyday work, in fact, if it's not, maybe it's better. It needs to be. The idea is that you make it into a tool project that you can experiment different concepts with, and you get into the habit of creating one project per component and curating that component inside of that project. Okay, and then, so that you exercise, you make the exercise of uh, shifting hats, right, and not just being the the the, the 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 publisher of the component, but also when you step into that uh, dummy, that demo form where you are actually instantiating it, you start you shift hats and you start thinking, okay, what skins will any other developer need? What proper properties should I expose for any other any other developer to use, and so on, right? Um, document it and publish it. I I encourage you to use uh, GitHub.com, but you should also know that the, the the Kony Marketplace allows you to publish components. Right? You can submit pop, uh, components for publication, uh, and this is actually encouraged. Okay, um, so share, try to share with the community. Try to so it's it's kind of a, a an exercise of. Um, um, and try to trying to showcase what you can do, and it, 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 the idea is that it will it will uh, drive uh, or in, in inspire others to contribute as well, and so so that you can all grow as a as a developer community, right? And uh, again, yeah, publish to GitHub. Uh, the one of the main reasons I like GitHub so much is because of the of being able to track the history of my component and being able to document it in Markdown and have others. Have a look at it and, and start it and follow and and uh, and comment on what things are or if you if you see one of these projects published and you think that there are things that are can be improved or if you have questions about any of those implementations please do not hesitate you can create a, you can either email me or you can create an issue against one of those repositories and I'll answer directly on the repository um, uh, after the session is done uh, I think we can still have a little bit of Q&A but after the session is done, if there are any outstanding questions, please go to basecamp.com. Um, and uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, it's, 
it's been great. And uh, thanks. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mary and Mai for hosting uh, the Basecamp engineering team, of course, for making it possible and giving us a place to, to share as a community, and Philip for being my, my wingman today. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miguel. Thank you so much for your time and session today. Um, I know it took a bit longer, but a lot of information to share, and um, I'm hoping that um, audience today is taking back a lot of info from your webinar. Um, thanks to everyone who has joined us today. Um, if you are, if you if you've joined for the first time, um, just want to tell you that we will be posting the webinar recording on our events page, so you can later on. Uh, uh, you know, after a few hours, uh, check out the events page on Basecamp, and um, you will see the webinar recording. You can share it with your peers, friends, colleagues if they've not joined it, join us today. Um, again, there is one question uh, from Sagar. I see um, it says, "Can we use ES6 observable instead of Amplify JS?" Um, I've not, I've not experimented with that, uh, but um, let's see. I do have I would encourage you to try Oh, I haven't published it. Okay, so I, I haven't tried that. Um, I do have a, a toy project where I, I have a list of, of variables and I try to test, you know, uh, what ES6 properties are supported and which ones are not. The the um, you have to remember the the Kony virtual machine is actually um, a uh, a Google Chrome engine or for Android. And the equivalent for uh, for for iOS uh, with uh, a whole lot of uh, Kony proprietary IP on top, uh, but at the at its core, it's it, uh, it's a JavaScript engine uh, that is compliant with ES6. So the default answer for most of these uh, so far that I have seen, for instance, I I like to use promises. I use them a lot. And there's absolutely no problem with, with using promises. In fact, I think you, you might have seen in the code that I showed today, I was using promises and, uh, instead of callbacks. So that should not be a problem. But uh, just try to alert the type of the, the variable or the object that you want to use. And if you get an undefined, then, then sadly you can. Or you could find a, a public field for, um, in, in order to define that. Thank you. Um, so if you still have more questions, feel free to post it in the Q&A panel. Um, we are still here for a few more minutes uh, before we close the session. So um, you can post it here. If you don't have questions right now, you can ask on Basecamp community. Uh, we have a pretty active forum there. And uh, by the way, Miguel is a um, super active contributor on Basecamp. So if you have questions, you can tag him also on Basecamp and ask questions later. Um, I thank you all for joining us today. Uh, it was a great session. Thanks, Miguel, Philip, uh, for joining us today and doing this session. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll see you again in the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you.